Thank you uh, for listening in today. My name is Sandrine Van Frank. I work at the Research Center for Non-Destructive Testing, or in short, RECENT. Um, I'm head of TerraHuts Technology there. Today, I would like to present you um, a new computed tomography technique based on TerraHuts radiation, which offers the particular advantage of uh, having particular high accuracy. I'm not sure how many people are familiar with uh, terahertz technology, so I'm starting with some basic notions about terahertz, what it is, uh, what it can do for industry, for non-destructive testing. Then I will expand more about um, terahertz for computed tomography. I will show results that we obtained uh, recently with innovative approaches. That will be the big part of my talk. Uh, then I want to give you a quick glimpse into industrial uh, terahertz uh, systems so that you see what is out there uh, and what we did also on that topic. And then a last slide uh, a bit about uh, our company. So uh, what is terahertz? Um, not everyone has heard of it. Uh, it's not so well known yet. Maybe you've heard about it in relation to security applications, uh, in particular at airports. This is uh, what you can see in the image uh, on the right. Um, it's not the only application uh, that's possible and that exists. And to understand what's possible, it's interesting to have some basic knowledge of the properties of terahertz radiation and its limitations. So to start with, uh, terahertz radiation is a part of the electromagnetic spectrum that you have here on the slide. It's located uh, between microwave, millimeter wave range and the infrared range. So the definition is um, about 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz is considered terahertz range that corresponds to a wavelength of 30 micrometer to three millimeters. From a technological point of view, it's located between the realms of electronics and the realm of photonics. And as you may know, these are quite different technologies. Actually, terahertz technology is relatively new. For a very long time, there was simply no convenient source or detector available. The first ones for more for laboratory settings date back to the mid 80s. And since then, there's been a lot of progress made um, such that there are more and more sources and detectors that are yet uh, reaching a certain maturity and that can be used uh, for industrial applications um, and non-destructive testing. So here are um, some key um, properties of terahertz radiation. One very interesting aspect is that with terahertz radiation, you can actually image or see through many materials that are opaque in the visible range or even in the infrared range. So it has a high penetration depth into, um, for example, plastics uh, or composites, wood and paper, um, glass, um, but also food uh, if it's semi-dry. So a lot of things that are relevant for the industry. And it can then detect uh, hidden features, um, whether it's something uh, that's uh, planned there or not. So voids, air bubbles, for example, inclusions that shouldn't be there, or uh, layers, a measurement of uh, layer thickness, um, detection of the laminations, these kind of things. What it cannot uh, go through is uh, water and uh, metallic materials. But on the other hand, the strong reflection that you get uh, from metal make it actually a good detector for this kind of, uh, of materials in, within an object, for example. What can also be very interesting is to do spectroscopy with terahertz because there is some information uh, that is really terahertz specific that can be extracted. Uh, one example I give here is if you have um, material uh, that's uh, crystalline and you have it in crystal or a morph form, um, you can actually often differentiate the two using terahertz spectroscopy. And finally, it's a low energy uh, radiation, which can be very interesting in particular because it means uh, it's a safe radiation to use for, the, for humans. 
Here are some applications that, um, some examples of things that we did uh, in the lab. So you see it's divided into two main areas. One is imaging, the other one is spectroscopy. So on the left side, imaging, um, the first example, uh, middle left um, is a polarization sensitive measurement, um, which allowed us to measure the orientation of glass fibers into a fiber reinforced plastic. So that's one thing you can do with terahertz. The one at the bottom left um, is imaging of defects. So in that case, air bubbles in uh, adhesive layer. So here you see the terahertz image. And uh, actually these air bubbles are hidden from view by a plastic layer that's not transparent. So you would not see anything with the naked eye, but you do see them on the terahertz image. Another application, um, which is actually getting quite a lot of traction is um, layer thickness measurement here in a multi-layer pipe. So here you use reflections from in, that you get at different interfaces uh, to actually extract, knowing the, the materials of your pipe, to extract the thickness of the individual layers. And all this in a way that's non-destructive for the object and non-contact. Uh, on the right side, you have a couple of uh, spectroscopy application example. Here in the top example, we pressed into a tablet different substances and uh, we showed doing spectral analysis that you can separate these uh, substances, analyze really the composition of the tablet. At the bottom is an example where we scanned um, a card and we could differentiate uh, between different structures, some that are visible like the chip here and some that are hidden within the card. When you do image an image of the um, sample, you see all three. And if you do a spectral analysis, you can also differentiate the different structure based on ma what material it is. So uh, looking at that, and especially considering the nice uh, property that terahertz can see through materials, of course, uh, it's quite natural to wonder if you can do computed tomography also with terahertz. And uh, maybe if standard methods that exist uh, with X-ray can ap be applied uh, with terahertz. So there are some advantages and uh, also some challenges uh, to using terahertz radiation to do computed tomography. The advantages um, is that first it's uh, non-ionizing safe radiation, so you don't need shielding uh, for the operators, which can be really nice to use in any environment. It's also usable for um, many materials, as I showed before, especially for plastics where X-ray um, can have uh, problems. Then there are some challenges, which mostly have to do with the fact that the wavelength uh, of terahertz um, is uh, rather large. So you have less favorable optical effects, let's say, compared to using X-ray. So one um, thing that you have is, uh, for example, refraction effects. Um, the beam itself cannot be considering, uh, considered like a straight line, but is often Gaussian shaped. Uh, so these are things that um, are under investigation, can be very important to take into account to improve image quality. Generally, terahertz CT is still a technique uh, that is in the early stage stages of development, but I think it's quite promising. So on the right side, I show a couple of uh, images um, where you can see what we have in the lab. So on the top image um, is an illustration of our setup. We have a source that emits a pulse terahertz. Um, this terahertz pulse is then focused on a sample using a pair of mirrors. In that case, we actually um, rotate the sample itself uh, in the lab, of course, in practice, it would be more interesting to rotate the measurement, um, measurement setup. Um, anyway, you have uh, two photos uh, showing the sample and the holder that we have in the lab. Um, here at the bottom, an image uh, representing what we're doing to the sample, so rotating it and translating it for the scanning. 
And finally, the last image uh, bottom right, uh, you show the software shows the software interface that we developed uh, to do measurements uh, for imaging and CT in particular. Um, interesting can be to look at the, the signal, which is the first plot. You see here the terahertz pulse that we measure. And um, if you do a Fourier transform, then you can obtain the spectrum, uh, which extends for our source and detector from about 100 gigahertz to 2.53 terahertz. So that's just to have an idea uh, what it looks like uh, for us in practice. Um, then coming back to CT in general and current, current achievements from us, but also from other groups, there was already some uh, work that showed um, that you can do terahertz CT with high resolution or uh, high accuracy. So the numbers are in hundreds of micrometers, but you have to remember that the wavelength of the terahertz radiation is uh, much longer than for X-ray. So one terahertz um, represents 300 micrometers. So with our uh, setup, uh, with our uh, method, we could actually reach an accuracy that's lower than um, than lo that's lower than the um, uh, center wavelength um, of our system. And uh, others have shown with high frequency continuous wave uh, systems also uh, resolution on the order of 250 micrometers. There are also already some very fast system that do terahertz CT either with single or few frequency system. Um, there are some uh, innovative approaches that allow for improved image quality. Um, one of them is our phase contrast terahertz CT, which I will go in a bit more detail in a second. And also uh, including different optical effects, such as uh, refraction uh, in the reconstruction, which is uh, something that we did um, in the two publications the, um, that are listed here at the bottom of the slides in Optics Express. So, um, I can show you with the images uh, on the right side what we did uh, in the frame of terahertz CT. So we have here an example of a 3D printed uh, sample with a tube and the letters tera THZ for terahertz inside. And uh, we applied um, standard X-ray reconstruction methods um, using the amplitude of the pulse, so similar to the, what, we, what you could do with intensity. And there you can see that the letters THC are uh, barely recognizable. On the other hand, if uh, you use the phase information that's contained in the pulse, then you have a much better image quality. The letters THC appear very clearly. Um, and another thing that you can notice is that Although in the original sample, all the structures are about the same wall thickness, the letters here um, are thicker than the tube wall, which is due to uh, refraction. So what um, you can do is include refraction effects. And with that, you can reach um, high accuracy, both for straight wall samples and curved wall samples. So here are two examples of other samples that we measured. For this sample with straight walls, we actually would have a measurement of an accuracy of about 100 microns. And if you have curved wall, which is where the refraction effects get problematic because they deviate uh, your beam, then um, correcting for the refraction allows us to go from uh, accuracy of about 600 micrometer down to 150 micrometers. Then we also uh, try to estimate um, the resolution in the sense of if you have um, a gap um, in the wall, can you detect it? How well can you measure it? So we have here uh, in a sample that is also constituted of two uh, tubes. Uh, in the inner tubes, gaps that go from one millimeter uh, to five millimeter uh, width. And we showed that down to three millimeters, you could estimate the size of the defect 
uh, quite well. With one and two millimeters, you can still detect it, but you can't easily or as easily measure it. So that's why we say we have a resolution that's on the other one, two millimeters. And that's actually limited by the spot size of the terahertz beam, um, which is relatively large. So a couple more information with our current setup. We can image samples that are up to seven centimeters in, in width. And we have, as far as we know, the fastest pulse terahertz CT reported uh, in literature. For information or for comparison, I'll also show a couple of examples on the right side from other research groups. Um, so one is a Rollit corrector that has been imaged with a continuous wave terahertz system at a, low, a rather low frequency. The advantage is that it's a rather cheap and fast solution um, with the convenient that the resolution is not so high. And at the bottom, you see a very detailed tomographic image taken with a high frequency um, terahertz setup. And um, this setup is also quite fast, uh, not as cheap, um, but it has very high resolution at the expense of a maybe restricted uh, field of view. Anyway, I think all interesting um, setup with their advantages and their limitations, and it depends on the application, which ones is more interesting. Okay, with that, I'm coming to the part about industrial terahertz systems, so not anymore uh, for CT, but uh, rather for imaging or measurements in general. Um, here I have a video uh, showing a high-speed terahertz system, which we developed. It's coupled to a robot and allows to measure free form objects. Um, it's been developed in collaboration with the company Phil in Austria. So I'll start the video. There's no sound, so that's normal. Um, so. Okay, so here you see um, the robots and the terahertz scanner. Um, in each of the sample, we hit some, um, some structures, so letters that represent the name of the project, partner, project partners. And as you see, the robot allows to measure uh, any kind of, uh, of form. Um, here you have again the software interface, as I showed earlier, that allows to show some scans in real time. And uh, you see here the letters that were hidden in the sample that you saw before. So generally here, these are like um, custom made uh, uh, structures, but you can also use this system to detect real defects like voids or delaminations, these kind of things. That's the idea behind the, the system. Okay, um, here are a few more examples uh, of setups that are commercially commercially available. So for example, uh, InnoX um, has, uh, is producing um, this system that allows to measure the thickness of pipes in extrusion lines. Again, uh, you know, fashion that is non-contact um, and uh, non-destructive and safe. Uh, ter the company TerraSense is developing, uh, among other things, this uh, linear cameras, uh, single frequency system, um, which, with which you can do 2D images um, of samples if they are, for example, um, if they, for example, travel on the conveyor belt above the camera. The bottom, you have a device produced by Hubner Photonics that allows to do made inspection to detect uh, suspicious substances um, like drugs or explosives. Um, finally, I would like to show you an industrial terahertz uh, system that's specially made for CT, but uh, there is none uh, available yet. I hope this will change soon. Um, in any case, we are striving to make it a reality. Uh, we are looking for key enabling applications uh, to uh, accelerate the development. So if you are interested, uh, if you have ideas, don't hesitate to reach out to us. So one slide about um, our company. We are a research center for non-destructive testing. 
we have two main research areas. One is acoustics, the other one is optics. And uh, within each area, we have several groups. So in acoustic, the main group does a laser ultrasound, but we also have a group doing physical and computational acoustics. And in optics, we have three groups, one focusing on infrared and Raman spectroscopy, one on terahertz technology, and uh, one doing optical coherence tomography. Our expertise, as our name uh, says, is uh, non-destructive testing of material. Uh, we develop all technologies that uh, allow to do contactless um, analysis and material characterization of all types of materials depending on the technology, so metals, composites, uh, chemicals, polymers, coatings, um, everything. We work a lot to do a quality control and assurance for batch production, production control in general, with all different technologies. Um, we cover the chain from basic research all the way to construction of prototype uh, for contactless sensors. Um, and uh, finally, we have a special technology and project management branch we, where we do sensor development for various areas of applications. So here are our contact data. Uh, if you want to contact us, you can either contact me, um, I'm head of Terahertz technology, or you can contact uh, my colleague, uh, Robert Holzer, who is responsible for the business development and project management at Recent. With that, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>